Welcome back to Living the Next Chapter. It's Dave. Uh, normally we have our guest on here first, but it's me. You're hearing my voice first because today's episode is a little different. We're doing a what we call a feed drop. What is a feed drop? Well, you're experiencing one right now where we are going to pull in an episode from another author podcast and put it here in front of you so we can expand your uh, taste in podcasts for authors. When we have Maccabee Griffin's podcast, Beyond the Pen, uh, it's a great podcast for authors. If uh, you're an author and been on the show or you're going to come on this podcast, maybe reach out to Maccabee and, and get on his show as well. But we're doing a feed drop. So I'm taking an entire episode from Maccabee's uh, episodes and putting it right here for you. So I'm going to ju- get out of the way and let you experience Beyond the Pen. And Maccabee Griffin's guest for this is Judy M. Baker. And we're going to, she's going to be talking about from book to clients, learn how to market your book authentically here on Living the Next Chapter. We're so proud to present Beyond the Pen and Maccabee Griffin. Here's the episode in its entirety. I would love for you to go and check out his podcast. All the links in the show notes are there and would love for you to go support Maccabee and his great guests as well. Here we go. Welcome to Beyond the Pen, the podcast that delves into the untold stories of emerging authors and the literary world. I'm your host, Maccabee Griffin, and each week I'll be shining a spotlight on talented yet undiscovered authors, giving them a platform to share their incredible stories and unique journeys that brought them to the world of writing. In each episode, we'll deep dive into the story behind the story, exploring the inspirations, challenges, and triumphs that have shaped our guests' literary careers, and have some fun along the way. From the initial spark of an idea to the journey of crafting and publishing their books, we'll uncover the secrets that make their stories truly special. But that's not all. Once a month, we'll be joined by an expert from the publishing world who will share invaluable insights and advice for aspiring writers, answering your burning questions, and demystifying the path to success in the literary industry. At Beyond the Pen, my mission is simple, to entertain, educate and encourage the next generation of great storytellers. So whether you're a writer, an avid reader, or simply someone with a passion for storytelling, join us as we venture beyond the pen and celebrate the power of the written word. Hello, all you happy, beautiful, book-loving people. It is your boy, Maccabee Griffin, again. And we are thrilled to have the ever-inspirational Judy M. Baker with us today. Judy has transformed her life and channeled her experience battling ovarian cancer into a profound appreciation for happiness and wellness. And as the book marketing mentor, she's on a mission to spread positivity and success to storytellers, young and old, one author at a time. And with her unique blend of deep listening, heartfelt guidance, and unwavering support, Judy is no stranger to the challenges faced by authors and business owners, and she's made it her professional purpose to help them rise above and flourish. I have come to talk to Judy on a couple occasions, and it has been amazing. She has so much insight into the marketing world when it comes to books, as well as just creative insights, even into logos. Go figure. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming the creative catalyst, the curiosity conductor, and the passion powerhouse herself, Judy, the silver lining scribe baker to be on the pen. Welcome, Judy. Well, I feel honored. It's been just, you lifted my spirits today. I was having, I was having kind of a gray day and you've already made me laugh and it was fun looking at your new logo. I know it's going to be so fun once I get done with it and being able to really put it out there for everybody to see. I got a few ideas, but you know what? We're evolving here. You help people evolve their ideas and their mindsets to Not just look at their stories as just plain old stories, but as pieces of of a masterpiece, as an overall masterpiece that they're not really fully seeing at the time. So 
before we start getting into the whole book marketing idea and everything, could you please introduce yourself to my lovely book readers here and give us something, if you're willing, that we can't find out anything about you? Oh, okay. Well, I have always been a book lover. I can I can still remember being a little kid and I was sitting in the kitchen figuring out what words were. And so my mom was cooking and I go, is this a word? I had a little tablet. I said, is this a word? Is this a word? And as soon as I could put them together in sentences, I was off to the library with my dad probably three times a week. And I always got, you know, massive. I got all the books that I could take out, always went to the limit. And later on, it turns out I worked in the public library in San Diego. My sisters all worked in the university library, uh, San Diego State, when we were, we were all in college together. And I was the youngest, but I was the only one that worked in the public library. And one of my sisters married a librarian. Go figure. So I've been addicted to books my whole life. And I know how to typeset using a Veritype machine. So most people don't even know what that is, but I remember when they went from the lead type that you had to set by hand to it being computerized. And it was all because a friend of mine worked for Veritiper. And then I marched in to my, my counselor at school and I said, um, I don't want to take home next se- next semester because I've been cooking for a really long time. I'd like to take the, uh, the class where I can print my book. And he looked at me and he said, uh, that's only for boys. I said, uh, no, I'm taking the class. And, okay, most people don't know this. Few, very few people do. My dad came down to the school and said, she's taking the class. And this is before there were equal rights for women, before Title VII. So I broke that mold. I was the oh, And I was the only girl in this class. Had a blast. I set type, had learned how to use an offset press. And then later on, I became a graphic designer. So all of this stuff worked. And I've been writing my whole life. Poetry, nonfiction, uh, magical realism. I just love books. Well, it, it does make sense, you know, being the silver scribe yourself, you know. So we're lining scribe, excuse me. Oh, thank uh, you for that one. <laughs> <laughs> you're very welcome. The creative catalyst, mm-hmm. the curiosity conductor, and the passion powerhouse. Oh, <laughs> I sound so wonderful. I have to meet you. <laughs> you know, I, I, I say the same thing sometimes to myself. I have to be that innovating sometimes. And, you know, it takes a lot of great strategies to get where you're at right now, especially for, you know, new authors. And, you know, as someone who really is starting to get into that, um, into that world a little bit more in the publishing world, creating these great networking uh, programs, as well as just developing these relationships with people that have Mm -hmm. the experience that I really need (laughs) and I really want. um, (sighs) You know, for authors, what what strategies can they use to identify their ideal reader demographic when they're coming to you? Well, some of the authors have not yet written their book. Some have written it. And either way, you can look at where are you showing up now? Where do you find where do you find your clients and readers? Since I, I tend to specialize more with nonfiction than with fiction. And if you look at, are you letting people know that you're a writer, you know, in your different social profiles? And if you've published, are you putting that information, like in LinkedIn, you can list your books and you can do it on other ones, but LinkedIn has an actual section for publication. Um, Getting to know your audience is not as hard as you might think. You can do it. And have some fun with it. You can post questions, do a survey. People love stuff like that. And if you're a problem solver, ask some of the the questions that you get from 
your existing clients and prospects. Put it in their language. And the best thing in the whole world to find out if your book is resonating with your audience, if you have an email list, you can be talking to your audience and growing it as you are writing your book, publishing your book, marketing your book. And it isn't about buy my book. You're continuing to educate and give solutions. People are looking for, you know, well, we were talking earlier. I was having some weirdness with my mic. So I said, okay, not going to deal with that right now. You were having some weirdness with your computer. Now, if those problems persisted, what would we do? We would call a specialist. Uh And that's where I come in because I help authors frame the journey that they are on so that while they're in it, they are making those connections. And as you said, making connections is golden. Yes, absolutely. And I I think it's really um, one of those things that a lot of authors really don't think about sometimes when they're first starting up, because, you know, when I ask about ideal you know, the, the ideal reader, the demographic that people should go to. There's a lot of times where people are like, well, I don't even know what I'm writing right now. It's like, okay, well, fine. That's great. Get your story first. And then realize as it's organically growing, just start putting notes here and there to, to figure out like, oh, these are little things like um, the magic. Well, there's tons of people in, into magic anymore. It doesn't make it, matter the ages either which is mm-hmm. great you know yep. thank you harry potter um <laughs> oh lord don't you just love young adult novels i mean seriously they mm-hmm. are to me they're like candy it is and, and that's what i think is great is because it, as we've looked over the the past year young adult has like skyrocketed absolutely between that and romance i mm-hmm. mean it, it's there it, it's like then a lot of them are taking the romantic young adult to a different level. I mean, mm-hmm. look at um, who was it? Uh, Katie Cross, I think her, her yeah. name is. Oh my gosh! Just took she off. she went from like barely no one even knowing her name to all of a sudden she's like one of the top romantic authors of this year. Exactly, and she's been doing it for a while though. Yeah, I, I can't even remember how many books she has out. I, it, it's funny that oh, it's a lot. It, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot. yeah, I think it's funny that a guy who barely, when he was going to school, hated reading. You know, really? barely, I, oh man, I hated reading. I even, don't get me wrong; I had plenty of you know books, but most yeah. of them were like encyclopedias. Yeah. My parents would pick up from like yard sales. Like, here, you read this. <laughs> we need to help you a little. Bit. Yes, um, but my favorites when I was growing up were. You know, and here's where I'm going to show my age again. Um, <laughs> I loved, you know, Hardy Boys. I liked uh, the uh, Boxcar Children mm-hmm. were always good ones. Um, I loved the old, uh, oh, my gosh, Dashiell Hamming. Oh, no, oh the, my God. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Sam Spade's my favorite character. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Maltese Falcon. Greatest book ever. Greatest story ever. I love it. Of course. But these are things that I really enjoyed. And I think that's something that a lot of people are trying to really reinvestigate Mm -hmm. using social media Mm -hmm. and uh, understanding the effectiveness of how the analytics determine the best targeted audience that we have. What are some of the strategies that you figured out over the years of being a published author, but Mm -hmm. also being someone who's been out there helping other people? What are some of these great strategies to help get their books marketed better? Well, always looking at third party verification that you have a wonderful book. That means getting reviews. You can invite people to do advanced reviews, building up uh, beta readers for your book, because you know what? When people are invested in your success, they will help you spread the word. And 
what we're seeing now, one of the biggest phenomenons is, well, Sanderson uh, raised what? He raised $41 million in a Kickstarter campaign for his book. And so more authors have, have chosen that path. And it does kind of a double, it's double duty because it's social media, it's marketing, you're verifying people want what you are writing about. And best of all, you get their email addresses. So now they're in your community so you can you can have conversations. I've also seen, this is really marvelous. Um, one of the ways to use social media is create a group based on your expertise, invite people in, get the conversation going. And then people look at you whenever you're the host, yes, host host with most, when you're the host of a group, a summit, um, if you're doing a webinar, whatever those things uh, that you choose to do that showcase your talent, people go, oh, not only are you published, but you're an authority and they look up to you. So there's this instant, hey, you're the real deal. So it doesn't have to be um, that you're on every single channel. And I really, I know there are people who go, oh man, I've got to be on LinkedIn and Facebook and TikTok and you know ugh, forever. I The way I approach it is, let's look at where you're the most active and where your audience is the most active. Put your energy there first, Get re- go deep, you know, pay attention, comment back, invite people, you know, to, well, like you and I were looking at your logo. You can do, you can say, oh, here's a, here's the two covers I'm thinking of, or here's a sample chapter. Would you give me some feedback? That investment is what really works. And being organic rather than going for the paid stuff first. If it's working, you can always add dollars to it. So before you go out and and do a a Facebook ad or, you know, some other thing where they're asking for money, see what happens when you really put yourself in it and put yourself in the position. What would my reader want to know about me? What would my reader enjoy learning? And it's 90, I I say 95%, you're educating you're being you're being conversational. That's what works on social. Yeah, and, and you know, there's a lot of things that are with that. I mean, she, ladies and gentlemen, she just dropped so many freaking gems. I'm I'm having a hard time figuring out which one I want to go after first. So I'm going to I'm going to go after this social media one real quick. Okay. On um, because you said that one of the things like I'm trying I want to get feedback. You know, yeah. give me some feedback. Here's this, here's that. Let me know what it is. One of the things that uh, on a, a previous um, episode was with the local library um, oh. that I had here. Mm-hmm. I know. I yes. know. I, I, the library is so close to your heart. I know. It's they great. are. They are. I, I, lo- I love my place. librarians. They're my happy I, place, they, definitely. Oh, I wouldn't have gotten through my graduate program without a librarian. Now, mm-hmm. most people today don't realize this. When I was doing research for my uh, for my senior project, mm-hmm. I had to write out what I wanted and I had to engage the skills of the research librarian. We weren't allowed. There, there was no there was no way there was the Internet, but there was no way for individuals unless you had a really whole boatload of money to do the research. And so we had to ask the librarian to put the query in and get that back and then look at it and see if we got what we wanted. It wasn't like right now I could, I could just Google something and I'd probably get more content than I ever did. But Mm -hmm. you know, we're kind of spoiled with that, but research librarians and the special librarians, they still have knowledge that most people don't. They studied that. So take advantage of it. They can help you when you're doing your marketing too. You mean the free resources at your local library are oh actually. Gosh, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh, and you know, even thinking about that, um, I think it was, it had to be pre 
pre pandemic, we mm-hmm. had, um, we had an, we had, they do author talks at our local library. Yep. The thing, it was jammed. There were, I think there were 200 people. I mean, I live in a very small town. I live in Sonoma and it's little, but the library was packed and we all came to hear the author. We all, you know, were excited. It was part of her book tour. And I think people sometimes forget they can, they can do talks for free at a local library and really get a big audience if they let enough people know about it. They get the support of the library. I mean, my library, oh my God, to get on their event list, you better plan three or four months ahead of time. There are so many events that they put on. And that's just in my little library. Yeah, we've got a a, a big one coming up uh, here in the next couple of weeks. Um, it's the at the at the forum um, forum event center uh, on April fifteenth. Uh, we have a local book fair, local authors book fair. Oh, coming awesome! Up. Yeah. And uh, of course, Beyond the Pen is going to be there. We're going to be interviewing some various authors there as well. Um, one of the things I really noticed uh, from that, uh, one of the little gems of wisdom that we got from our lo- librarians, because they're so awesome, uh, was some creative ways that people look at reviews. And, you know, some people pay for reviews, and that's great. In fact, you should do that. But do a little bit of background on the reviews first off. Oh, God, Make God. sure it's like in, in the, yeah, instead of the, like the uh, public, there's a public uh, library uh, review program. I can't remember what it, it's called, uh, but there's articles that they do every, every week mm-hmm. on like the latest, latest books and reviews and everything like that. What are some creative ways that people can optimize their book listings on Amazon as well as on these paid uh, review uh, programs um, that'll get the help their get their visibility and discoverability up a little bit more? Well, okay, this is also really close to my heart. Okay, so I'm picture me. I'm 16 years old. I'm working at the library, and we mm-hmm. had card catalogs. So Mm -hmm. I know there's listeners are going, what's a card catalog? (laughs) Um, Picture, picture Google on individual little cards, physical paper cards. That's how you found stuff. And everything was uh, identified by a Dewey decimal number. Similar to what we're looking at today, your ISBN is your identifier and it goes everywhere that your book is out there. Well, that's only one small piece of metadata. So today, when you are putting your book up for sale, whether it's on Amazon or it's on another seller like, you know, Barnes and Noble, maybe you're using draft to digital, the better you complete the information associated with your ISBN number, which is a regulation. Now in Canada, they don't have to pay for them. It's a government thing. They're free. In the United States and most other places in the world, you have to pay for your ISBN. And when, because it's a unique identifier, think of it like your social security number. That goes with you everywhere and it's a descriptor. But with your ISBN, you have your book title and your book title better be really grabby, you know, Mm -hmm. get eyeballs. You can have a huge subtitle that gets into more information and includes keywords that people are searching for in that title. That's another thing that will attract. When you first put your books up on most services, there's a limit to how many categories you can be in. In Amazon land, at KDP, you can put it in, you can put your book in two categories. Well, that is okay, but that's not getting into the details. After, right. after you publish, you go in to your account and you request additional categories. You can have up to 10. So say if I had a book, which I'm, which I actually am working on, uh, is a business, it's for business owners. It is how to, you know, pick the right topic for your book. And then how do you 
grow your marketing garden with that content. So we've got a lot of different themes in there. We've got mindset. We have uh, writing skills, editing, marketing, um, you know, the whole the whole way that you build your following. So we could be looking at numerous categories in there. So that will also help having a good, oh, this is this is one thing that people forget to do when they're new. Mm-hmm. Author Central allows you to create an author page. So your book. Really? Oh, yes. So not only is your book up there, but think of it as an additional free website. And when I go to look for for books, especially for nonfiction, first thing I do is I click on the author's name and look to see, do they have an author page? Because that author page, you can link it to your blog. You can link it to video. You can add pictures. You can put more information about your biography and what you do. And so people can find you. And as you have more books, you add those other books in there. So right now, my page is pretty robust. I've got the different anthologies that I've been part of, and it has my picture, which I think I just, I may have to update that. But so you have, it's like a, it's a profile, just the same mm-hmm. way you'd have it on LinkedIn or Facebook, but it's for readers. So people forget to do that, but that will raise your visibility and there's a few other things in there um, that Amazon provides for you, but they're not the only game in town. So the better you get at using the, the metadata, which when you register your book, you're doing that. And anywhere else, when they're asking you questions like, you know, who are you, your URL, how to get in touch, all of that, fill it in. And every time you use a photo or any graphic, be sure to use the alt tag, fill that in, because you know what? There are people out there who are listening, not reading. And for those who are visually impaired, that will help them consume your stuff. But it also, it's also, I call it Google juice. Uh, it ups your ranking. It's, it's search engine optimization 101. So get get comfortable with it. Get geeky with it. <laughs> oh no. Get geeky with it. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you, you need to you need to stay off the Google juice a little bit there. You okay. know? It's big. <laughs> Google juice on sale for $9.99. Oh at your yeah. Local library. Yeah. Um, <laughs> dang it, those librarians are your drug dealers. Oh my um gosh. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I have to be honest. Yeah, yeah, books are are. I'm addicted. I'm addicted. I've got. I have a hard time. Well, one anniversary, my husband and I spent in this bookstore is no longer there, but um, there was this great bookstore in downtown San Francisco, and we were, we were figuring out what we were doing for the for our anniversary, and we said, "Oh, we've got to go to Stacy's." Well, we both came out with a bunch of books. We were staying overnight in the city and that we were so happy. And then we went to dinner and we had a a marvelous time, but that was part of our celebration was buying books. Oh my gosh. Well, you know, in your case, you know, getting to the, the, you know, the heart of the matter is well through the lining of a book. Um, The back cover. Think about your back, back cover. cover. Yeah, that's all that true. information. Yeah, a lot of yeah. things. that information is golden. It's it's a it's a love letter to your readers. You're that's telling true. them you're telling them why they why this book is valuable to them, what they're going to get out of it, and it's your promise. Yeah, that that is very very true. Um, you are someone who who has been known to think outside the box a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just a bit, just a bit. Um, what are some examples of thinking outside the box when it comes to marketing people's books or adaptations mm-hmm. uh, to books that people 
should possibly uh, keep in mind when promoting their brand. Yeah. Because a book is your brand. It is. If you think about it from a business point of view. It totally is. Early on, because I was still, I, I, I'm not doing much design work anymore, but I was a graphic designer for uh, quite a long time. And I would work with my clients. I would do book covers. I would, you know, do their collateral material. And that includes, you know, a, a book sell sheet. Um, I did birth announcements for books. So we sent them out. We did virtual ones, but you could also do physical ones. And, you know, just like you do a baby announcement, you can do a book announcement and send it. I, and I really love that, sending that out in the mail, because just think about it. People don't get a lot of mail anymore. So it really stands out. Um, and several clients just, they had the best time. I said, well, you should, you should wear your book. Um, we've got enough print on demand services now where you can take your book cover, get stuff to wear. You can get mugs, uh, sweatshirts, t-shirts, bags, all kinds of things. So most of them have done that. And it's a lot of fun because, you know, you're really proud of your creation and it, it starts conversations, which is always what I'm looking for. Start a conversation. If your book has, um, well, one of my friends and a client has a book that also has an animated video of part of what's in the book. And so she has that up as a lead magnet on her website. So think about what little, you know, charm that you could that would represent what you do. And, you know, when you say that, you know, what I do, I, I love magic wands because you can change everything in a flash. So that would be something I would give out to people in the audience or when they buy the book that you can transform anything from where you are now to where you want to be when you shift your mindset. And, you know, just, Looking, looking at what's unique about you and sharing that with people. Um, this is, this one's really brilliant. One of my, she's a friend. I did not have her as a client, but uh, Betsy is a therapist and she was writing about her life as a stepmother, which I am also. And so she had In Your Shoes is the title of her book. So she has little uh, red shoes that she attaches to every bookmark that she gives out. That is interesting. Uh-huh. You'll, I mean, that is you'll intriguing. Do you just don't forget those things. That's true. Yeah. No, uh, I definitely had um, two of my previous guests because one of the things I always do is I always ask for a book. And oh. It doesn't matter if it's digital or not. Because, right. Well, you know. I have to, I have to have something to ask questions about, yes. you know, um, <laughs> but there every once in a while I get, I receive physical books. And what I do, I always make sure that they sign up because you never know mm. who's going to be that next literary icon. And so uh, I eat Katie cross. Um, uh, but yeah. one of the things that two of, two of my guests have done, and I love both of them to death. I still talk to them today. Uh, one one was Daniel, Danielle Orsino, who wrote uh, Locked Out of Heaven. And when she sent me her book, it was so good. It was so good. I, I opened up the package, and it was wrapped in uh, in tissue yeah. with a sticker yep. with, her, with her brand on it. Mm -hmm. And... But when I opened it up, there was a white feather inside. Oh, oh, how sweet is that? That was one of the other one uh, was I call her auntie because she just reminds me of a, an auntie. Yeah. Uh, was uh, P. Grayson uh, or uh, P. Grace. Yeah. P. Grayson. Sorry. And uh, she wrote a book called Ravenisha. And when I opened it up, I had merch like crazy from her. I had uh, a pen. I had yeah. little uh, little magnets. I had um, – what else did I have? I had a lot of things from her. It was kind of interesting yeah. to open that up. Uh, but 
it was really cool to see this this panther on there with this oh. uh, with a few of the things on there, wow. and that was her her yeah. little dick. So I get it. Merch is great to have. Every brand should have one. I'm working on mine right now, yes. but I got to make sure I get the right logo and everything else right. first before I start pushing it out. Yeah. Um, but these are things that people don't really think about when they're thinking, oh, it's just a book. No, it's not a book. It's your brand. It is your business. This is a business. Absolutely. And every book, every author that thinks like that thinks in a long-term mindset. Like yep. you said, you have to change your mindset when it comes to being an author anymore. Oh gosh. Yes. Because you notice that the ones that don't get too far with theirs are, I'm not saying they're not trying their best. Don't get me wrong. I'm not judging it, but you notice the difference in level yep. of how much creativity and how much they're willing to add to their idea of, okay, I need to get people's, talking about my book and everything. Oh yeah. Um, and it, it's that, that buildup that really helps people. So, mm-hmm. you know, when we're talking about that sustainability and yep. how to create these marketing plans that continually evolve mm-hmm. in this ever changing landscape right. of uh, publishing and promotions, um, how, how are some of the ways that we can build upon this? To think long term. Okay. Well, most most of the time, authors focus on the launch, and they mm-hmm. think that the publication date and the launch are the same thing. They're not. The day the book is available for sale is the day the book is available for sale. That's your publication date. Your launch, you can have multiple events. You can do online events. I've gone to you know, book events. Oh, not just during the pandemic, but because people have a global audience. So, you know, I've seen Stephen King, I've seen uh, James Patterson, I've seen all sorts of authors who came on, were generous with their time, were generous uh, talking to the audience. You know, they did that. Going to book festivals, being part of a summit, And also thinking about, so your launch, you're doing multiple events. They can be in person. And I don't recommend doing them at a bookstore necessarily. I would do maybe one at a bookstore, your favorite bookstore. But then you are one book with all these other books around you. But if your book is, you know, topical, you could do your book. You could do a book party at a restaurant, a winery the library, uh, could be a company. Maybe you're doing a, a, a collaborative thing and you're, you know, their, their product and services match what you're doing. So you're doing an event for them. If your book has an educational value, you could be doing, um, you could be a guest lecturer at a university. And of course, our favorite is you should be on podcasts as often as possible that match your audience. And if you go on a podcast once a week, every single time you do that, you're now sharing your brand, sharing what you're about, and you're reaching more people. And when you are a good guest, that podcast host will tell you, you're awesome. I'd love to have you back and let's do a deeper dive on a topic. Or they might also recommend other shows for you to go on. So the more folks who know you, the more books you're going to sell. That is very true. That is very, very true. And, you know, she's not wrong. You know, there's plenty of other podcasters that I know of that I'm always still sharing my guests with because, like she said, the more that you're out there, the more people are going to see you. And the more people are going to see you, the more people are going to start following you. They're going to be able to start giving those reviews out there, all kinds of great things. And that's what we want for all of our authors. So let me ask just one, one more question real quick, because everything is changing so much and people are always saying that, Oh, I can help you do this. My services are can do this. What are some of the things that authors need to look for? 
in someone to help them market their book? What are some of those red flags that people uh, have out there that they should keep an eye out for knowing the difference between the good ones and the bad ones? Number one, see if there are people who have used the service that you can actually talk to. And I mean, on the phone or doing a Zoom call, because I don't tr- I don't tr- necessarily trust reviews that are on people's sites if I don't know that service. So I look at that. There is a website called Writer Beware, and you can see what companies are like, eh, don't go there. And there's so many predatory companies who say, oh, we're going to, we're going to, you know, send out press releases to, you know, 50,000 locations. Well, yeah, they can send out 50,000, but they're not doing any follow up. That's not going to help you a whole lot. Look at what they're offering, what they're going to do and what they're asking you to do. So I always look at it this way. You have to ultimately be responsible for your marketing. It's your brand, your message, and your voice. If you're looking for someone who's going to help amplify it, be sure that they are as good as their word and that other people have had a good experience with them. Because there's a ton of vanity presses out there. There, oh, there are companies that say, oh, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna help get your book to number one and blah, 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 and all this stuff. They're really just taking your money. Um, and well, I belong, I belong to several writing groups. I belong to the Bay Area Independent Publishers Association. I'm president of Redwood Writers, which is one of the 22 California Writers Clubs. So being around other people who are in the same space as you, ask, who have you worked with? Who would you avoid? And just like you get, you get spam email, you get spam text, you get spam everything. Yeah, those things can look really slick, but they're not going to deliver. So I would be really hesitant and very cautious before I'm going to give somebody money to help me market my book. I can teach, I teach people how to market their book and it's the real deal. They get a playbook. We go through a course. You learn what you need to do to build your foundation. And I think if that's the real secret, if you build a strong foundation and it doesn't matter if like right now you've only got zero subscribers or maybe you've got 10 and they're all relatives, the fact that you are going to show up and you're going to do something to market your book at least once a week, if not every day, and it can just be one thing that that's going to make a bigger difference than if you say, oh, here, you be responsible, somebody else, you be responsible. Nobody's going to care as much about your book as you do. That is very true. And it's, it's something that we really need to truly express out there again, is that when we are really looking at these works of art that are out there, Mm -hmm. when we're thinking about the passions that get involved in, in this, you want to make sure that you're protecting it just like you would a child. Mm -hmm. Because that's exactly what they are. They're newborn children. And when we're developing them over time, you know, just like she said, sending out things saying, congratulations, you had a new baby boy. (laughs) And it's a book, you know, that's always fun. That's always interesting because everything is is a breath of fresh air. We just have to understand where we're getting that fresh air from. And we want to make sure that people are enjoying it because books are, you know, they are our oxygen in some way, shape or form. They're the oxygen to our civilization because they're always creating and developing something new. And speaking of creativity and development, it has come to that point of our show where we sit down with our guests (laughs) and we do a little bit of improv. So today, because Judy is not only a book lover, she's not only an author herself, a published author, but she's also very creative in the graphics. She's very creative in the marketing. She's just a creative person in general. So we're going to put her in a little bit of a story of our own. So everything's random. 
I never, I'm 9% of the time. I'm literally making things up as I'm talking right now. Okay. So <laughs> we're going to, we're going to create a little bit of a situation within a magical world of, you know, let, let's say, let's say, because I also love anime and this is just the pop, the thought popped into my head. You are in a fantasy realm, magic all over the place. You've got all these fant- fantastic creatures, and you are now a book marketer within that company, within that world itself, I should say. You've created your own company, your own brand, um, and all these people, all these creatures want books out there of their own. How would you... If I were a, we'll say a six foot four, uh, we'll say three hundred pound um, orc of a, mm. of a man <laughs> um, who has come in and has decided he is going to create a legacy for his for his tribe mm. for his his clan we'll say okay. but because of the world being it is you know orcs are really looked at as the smartest let alone the nicest of creatures what would you do for that orc oh this is what just came up the title of the book could be the oracle according to and then that person's name and then go into what benefit that book is providing. So if he's doing this as a legacy for his community, he could talk about um, how they overcame. I'm going to say that they overcame their, you know, their bad rep image to now be part of this magical community. And they're looked at as, wow, wow, if I call on the orcs, they're going to help me move mountains. And so now they've, they've shifted from being an out being outcasts and, and, you know, bad guys to being the good guys because they have the muscle to support change. So I would focus on that. You know, people, people love the stories of transformation because they see themselves in it. So he's got an audience out there. There are other people who maybe have physical or mental challenges and they aren't seen for who they really are. So that author is going to talk about that and and be recognized as somebody who is changing people's minds as well as their lives. I love that. That that's always this is why I like doing this stuff. It's always <laughs> fun just to see what people will come up with. So now that we've done a little bit of the entertainment part of the story, yes. <laughs> now it is time to learn about you, darling. Mm. And all your faults <laughs> as well. Well, at least the ones you're willing to give. Oh, um, absolutely. <laughs> all right. So first question. Yes. What is your writing kryptonite? Well, I'm actually going through that right now. My, I would say my writing kryptonite is self doubt. Yeah, that yeah. that hits a lot of people. It is it, that's it's one of those things. It's it's one of those top. Uh, I think I would say I would say about <laughs> top three, top four reasons why it's a kryptonite for a lot of people. Yeah. All right. Is there a quote? or person in your life that inspires you to continue to write, or in this case, to help people market their books? Uh, Well, you may not think about this as being directly related to to books, but it is. Uh, Maya Angelou said, people don't remember what you said, but they do remember how you made them feel. Mm. And I think if any but he's out there, whether you're, whether you're marketing your book or yourself or your business. And I look at it as being all one package. Think about the experience that you are providing. How are you holding the space and what are you doing? That's helping people be part of that. 
There you go. That's true. Yeah, because, you know, as storytellers, that's our most important thing is that we're expressing feelings. We're, mm-hmm. we're providing a another world for other people mm-hmm. to either build themselves into as for nonfiction and getting better or for those that, you know, nonfiction and escape more or less. Well, it's the hero's journey. It's the hero's journey, whether hero or heroine, whether whether you're doing fiction or nonfiction, there is a story arc. You're going from one state to another. And so one, you know, fiction tends to, to be more entertaining, but there should be entertainment in your nonfiction. And oh, there yeah, should be absolutely. excitement and there should be, you know, what's going to happen next? Don't you think? I mean. That keeps you turning the page to find out, well, what's next? Yeah, because you're not going to spend, you know, especially for a lot of these uh, bigger, you know, Barnes and Noble, Amazon, a lot of these bigger, well-known authors, when it comes to their books, they're paying 30, 40, almost 50 bucks for these sometimes, Mm -hmm. depending on who it is. Yeah. Because you are also known as a fiction author, Mm -hmm. (laughs) have you ever, if you're willing to... uh, state this yeah you don't have to use real names if you don't need to have you ever created a character based on somebody in your life just to kill them off in an instant oh honey i i did a real dastardly one (laughs) it was oh man i got back at everybody in in this one company that i worked worked in. I, I need to be careful about this because they're they're still alive. I don't want to get Acme. Around. Acme. But it was at the Acme co- Corporation. Oh, it? it was definitely the Acme Corporation, but yeah. But <laughs> let's just say that there was some um there there were some beverages involved, there was food involved. Um and yeah, I really killed them off. It felt so good. Wow. <laughs> That one hasn't been published. That one has not been published. (laughs) And they say words can't kill you. Um. (laughs) It was cathartic. I will tell you, it was just great. I went, oh, yeah, they did this, this. Oh, yeah. Kill them, kill them. They kill them off automatically. They're dead. All right. (laughs) I love it. All right. Final question. Okay. What is next? What is next for Judy B? Oh, my gosh. There are two things that are really happening right now. I am teaching a course called From Book to Clients that gets you that foundation as an author so that you're doing the things you need to do. You're not killing yourself. You're being authentic. You're not spending all your time. And you're using this as a tool to help market you and your book and your business. So that's number one, From Book to Clients. So the next group is going to be starting in uh, in May. And so that's an ongoing. The other thing I'm really excited about is I am, I'm co-authoring a book and we're blending um, our styles together. We've been working together for a while and that's going to get my business book out there. And I think that will be my catalyst to get my other two books, my memoir and a book of poetry published. Yay! Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Judy, for being on here. I appreciate it. It is time for the shameless self promotion point of the story of the story. Of the story. <laughs> well, this is a story. It's your story. It is. Where can people find you? What other big events besides the uh, course that you're creating now and anything else that you want to provide my lovely book readers? Well, I've got some, I've got some goodies for you all when you go to my website and you can sign up um, and you'll see, well, actually this is a secret. You can't, you can't find this if I don't tell you where it is. If you go to book marketing mentor.com, forward slash freebie, you're going to find right now, there's three resources up there for you and how to get more book reviews, how to make money from your book while you sleep and how people can know, like, and trust you with more ease. So I, I encourage you to go check that out. Bookmarketingmentor.com forward slash 
freebie and you'll get some goodies for yourself. And then I am president of Redwood Writers. So every month I'm hosting our membership and guests. That's live in real life in Santa Rosa um, on the third Saturday of the month. So I'm really excited about that. And I have been doing a master class. And uh, there's a big pink button at bookmarketingmentor.com. And you can click on that and register. So that's a that's a free way to get to know and learn more about book marketing. That is awesome. And all of her social links will also be in her profile at beyondthepenpodcast.com. And again, we want to thank, uh, I want to thank, uh, <laughs> but I'm also speaking for my readers as well. We all want to thank you, Judy, 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 to be on Beyond the Pen. Oh, thank, thank you. So you. It's been a delight, it. Mac. We will, we will have to talk more because I've got some other goodies for you and other people that I think you should meet. <laughs> Yes, McAbee, thank you so much for sharing your podcast with Living the Next Chapter. Everyone head over to the show notes and all the information will be there for you to connect with McAbee and his podcast. We'd love to get you out there supporting another great podcast for authors. And again, if you're looking to be a guest on this podcast or McAbee's, all the information's in the show notes. We'd love to have you as a guest here. And I know McAbee would love to have you as well. Thank you for listening, and we'll be back with our next episode here on Living the Next Chapter. Take care. Get out there and write your story. We want you as a guest. Take care. Hey there, fellow parent. If you're anything like me, balancing screen time for our kids is a constant struggle. That's why I want to share a little secret with you, Kids Pod. It's this amazing app I found that's packed with podcasts just for kids. Imagine stories, learning, and fun all without the screen. It's been a game changer in our house, keeping my kids engaged and their imaginations running wild. And guess what? It's completely free. So download Kids Pod today. Trust me, it's a decision you won't regret.